Three days later, and I don't think it's really sunk in yet, Quinn Hughes is a Vancouver Canuck. Oh, that feels so good to say officially on camera. So a couple of days before the NHL draft lottery, I wrote about how the Canucks didn't need to win the first, second, third overall pick in order to have future success. Sure, it would have been nice, but that just meant the Canucks would have to be a bit more creative, a bit more resourceful at finding those elite game-breaking players. And, you know, you never really know either. If you pick in the 6th or 7th range, you might end up getting the best, one of the best players in the draft. And, guys, I, I'm not claiming to be a prophet here, but things went pretty well. In today's NHL, you need to have game-breaking players. And I'm not just talking one or two, I'm talking four to six. You look at the past Stanley Cup winners, Stanley Cup finals, elite teams going into the playoffs, they all have at least four Brock Bessers. So far, the Canucks have a Brock Besser and they have an Elias Pettersson. Quinn Hughes is just that. He is a game-breaking player. You watch him play and he stands out every shift. He is a dominant at the college level as the youngest player in college, and somehow we got him at the seventh overall pick. That draft felt like waking up on Christmas morning, going to the Christmas tree and opening your present, and instead of getting coal for the sixth time in a row, you actually get the gift you want. Yes, Elias Pettersson, Brock Besser, they're not cold, but I'm trying to make a point here, okay? Seeing Brock Besser almost win the Calder Trophy this year and seeing Elias Pettersson dominate the SHL, yeah, that was great, but having Quinn Hughes now in the system, this may be the most optimistic I have ever been as a Canucks fan for their future. And is that a lot of pressure on an 18-year-old? Yes, absolutely it is, but something tells me he can handle it. And with that, let's get into the parts of Quinn Hughes' game that I absolutely love and the parts of his game that still could use some work, as well as just the impact that this will have on the Vancouver Canucks going forward. The first aspect of his game that I'd like to talk about is what I think is his most important, and no, I'm not talking about his skating. I'm talking about how he breaks down and processes the game. There was absolutely no coincidence that Quinn Hughes is second all-time in the USDP for points per game in a season for defensemen, as well as tying Brady Kachuk in points per game as a first-year eligible in the NCAA, as well as he didn't look out of place in the World Championships for Team USA playing against NHL-caliber players. When you watch him play against his peers, you can just tell he's on a whole nother level. He's able to take into account his strengths, weaknesses, and limitations, as well as process all of the externalities happening around him, and from there, he's able to control the game. In a lot of ways, he's like a basketball point guard. He's able to see the ice, distribute the puck to where he wants it to go, force players to go where they want it to go, and he'll go the other way and take it to the hole. The next skill that I'll talk about is his skating, something that a lot of people talk about and gush over and I'm no different, and I think it's his skating that allows what goes on in his head to actually happen on the ice. He has his mom to thank for how he skates so beautifully well. He's, he's graceful watching him skate, and because of that, he's able to to dominate in all three zones. Defensively, because of his transitional skating, he's able to maintain great gap control when defending off of the rush, and when he's retrieving pucks in his own zone, his edge work is so good that he's able to either fake one way and then burst off of one leg to the other to fake out a four checker, or he's able to loop around in his own zone, draw a four checker in, and then at the last second, just as the four checker is drawn in, he passes it off to his partner. Or if he's just feeling up to it, he can just blow by four checkers and take the puck out by himself. The kid is a one-man breakout machine. In the neutral zone, he's able to build up speed by using his edges and performing crossovers, much how Connor McDavid or Nathan McKinnon would play with the puck in the NHL. Constantly performing crossovers also allows another layer of deceptiveness and shiftiness as he's breaking into the blue line. Once he's in the offensive zone, he's great at creating shooting lanes for himself by patrolling the blue line. On the left side, he's great at basically walking the puck towards the middle and having this fadeaway wrist shot that more often than not hits the net. If shooting the puck isn't a viable option, that's no problem for Hughes as he will start to circle the offensive zone, opening up his hips, his body, and his skates into a V, allowing him to view the full surface of the offensive zone, finding his teammates open with his vision or finding an open lane to shoot. His skating is so vital to the way he plays, allowing him to be impactful in all three zones. He's almost like a fourth forward in the offensive zone as you'll often see him grabbing rebounds or playing down below the goal line or in the slot. Watching him play in the offensive zone for the Michigan Wolverines was very interesting as he was given quite a big leash to do what he wanted in the offensive zone with reason. It was almost like the Wolverines were just playing with five skaters without really a position as Hughes would just go from one spot to the other to the other on the ice 
and his skating just allows him to do that and also allows him to get back on a defensive play should he need to. It is just such a joy to watch Quinn Hughes skate and I hope us as Canucks fans really do appreciate it. I'm not kidding. I was up till 3 a.m. a couple nights ago just watching Quinn Hughes full shifts, just watching him skate. It's unbelievable to watch. His puck distribution skills are also elite. He can find teammates out of nowhere by threading the needle going cross ice tape to tape other times, you'll see him do a little curl in the offensive zone, and as he's just finishing that curl, he'll fire a pass over to his teammate with the defenders not suspecting a thing, and he'll also break the puck out with his great two-line passing ability. The kid's the real deal. Now, looking at his defensive side of the puck, again, like I mentioned before, his most important quality is the way he reads the game, and because of how he reads the D-zone, I have no doubt in my mind that he will not only be a good defender for his size, He's going to be a good defender, period. When he's locked in defensively, he has the ability to read plays before they happen and then assess that and make a calculated play to go and meet that player before the puck gets there and either intercept the puck or smother him enough where that player can't get up enough speed to really be that dangerous. I've mentioned this before, but gap control is extremely important when defending and especially when you're a smaller player. If a bigger player is barreling down on you with speed, you don't have a lot of chance at stopping him. When you watch Hughes play and the puck is sort of stuck in the neutral zone and Hughes is just below his own blue line and a puck squirts out to an opposing winger, Hughes is very, very good at meeting that player at the blue line by skating forward and then transitioning into his backwards crossovers that allows him to maintain good gap control, a stick length apart, his stick is pointed at the puck, controlling really where that forward can go, not really allowing him to cut into the middle or cut outside, Hughes really locks down and contains that forward. His hands are also incredibly underrated as he's not only able to burn you in the offensive zone, but those hands allow him to pick pucks out of a pile and kind of, you can either do a toe drag or dangle away out of danger in the defensive zone, as well as winning the odd stick lift. And when you combine his stick play with his skating ability that allows him to close out players, take away the puck, and transition up the other way, you have a one-man breakout and break-in machine. That's incredibly valuable in the NHL. And the last thing I love about Quinn Hughes's game is his confidence. His confidence with the puck, his confidence in himself and his abilities, and you look no further than the answers he gave in interviews about his confidence. He wanted to come to a Canadian market to play under the spotlight. When you, when you ask him about his defensive deficiencies, he'll tell you to go watch him in the World Championships and he'll say he didn't feel or look out of place. And when I watched those games, I completely agree with him. He was a pretty good defender for the amount of minutes he played. The only glaring thing that he needs to iron out of his game is that he tries to make the better play 100% of the time. If you were to tone that down to maybe 90% and make the safe play and recognize when to make that safe play 10% of the time, oh boy, you have a player. I guess now the question is, what does drafting Quinn Hughes mean for the Canucks? For starters, it confirms a new philosophy in Canucks management, drafting speed and skill. We saw it last year with Elias Pettersson, Petrus Palmu, and it, they doubled down on it, drafting another small, undersized player in Quinn Hughes. Now, Elias Pettersson, he's 6'2", 6'1", but he's one, he was 165 when he was drafted. That's still a slight player. Now, Quinn Hughes, who's 5'10", 5'11", 185, Again, another small player. It's a it's it's it is quite a sizable shift from where they were a couple years ago trying to draft Jake Vertanen, going for the meat and potatoes, Eric Branson type players. And to me, this is a great thing. They've recognized the new trend in the league that speed and skill will win championships. And I really do think that the Canucks found the next prototypical defender in the NHL in Quinn Hughes, a guy who is an elite skater and can move the puck reliably and efficiently. We are talking about a guy who in his prime will consistently be putting up at least 50 points a season. He is going to be the best defenseman in the league under six feet and I firmly believe he's going to make a case for himself when he's in his prime to be a top five defender in the league out of all sizes. The Canucks have never had a defenseman like this before. A true number one defenseman who can quarterback a power play, control the game, control the pace, make a breakout pass reliably. I mean, you have, yeah, Chris Tanov, but someone who can do this many facets of the game and play 25 minutes a night is going to be so special for the Vancouver Canucks. To me, he automatically becomes the best prospect the Canucks have, and I'm saying that over Elias Pettersson. 
and I think there's absolutely an argument that he is already the Canucks' second best defender on the left side behind Alex Edler. I'm gonna have a video coming out looking at some of his shifts at the World Championships for Team USA, but he did not look out of place at all playing against NHL caliber talent. So I guess to wrap things up, I'd like to talk about how important it's gonna be for his development in his first year as a Canuck, whether it be next year or the year after, that Travis Green allows Hughes to play his game. He's gonna be a guy that makes a lot of mistakes early on just because his game is so puck-centric. Hopefully he is allowed a big leash to see what he can and can't get away with and how he has to evolve his game. And I have no doubt that he'll be able to do that. He is so smart. He is going to dominate in the NHL one day. It's just a matter of when. Because what I think he brings to the table is just worth so much more than what some of his weaknesses in his game are. And to be honest, I don't even think there are that many. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Quinn freaking Hughes, baby. Let's go. I'm literally so excited to watch him play. I will be at the Canucks Summer Showcase on July 5th. If you guys are there, let me know down in the comments, and hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. If, you're, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like as it lets me know if I'm doing stuff right or wrong on this channel. Please expect more Quinn Hughes, Vancouver Canucks prospect videos, and other agency, NHL news, videos, stuff like that coming out over the course of the summer. If you're new to the channel, please consider hitting subscribe and following all of us on this magical, mystical Canucks journey. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. You know, drafting Quinn Hughes is great and all, but how does that affect the Leafs?